I've been noticing that a lot of people don't really know how to use the map editor correctly. And I mean, it's because I didn't make a tutorial on it. So I think it's best if I make a good tutorial about how you should use the map editor at your own advantage to make the best maps that maybe I'll feature for the official maps. Right? And you can also contact me for free coins if you make a good map. So as you can see, you can click on the map editor. There's different options. You can copy and paste maps that you made by yourself. And if you look here, you actually can't upload maps made by other people. So as to prevent plagiarism, but you can contact me if you really want a map and you can also download these maps here. I made it so you can, if you actually want to use my maps as models, you can download them here and they'll all appear right here. So if you click on a map, I'm actually going to make a new map. There's different options. I added a new continental map, which is a really big map. So I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with a large map that I'm going to create right here. And as you can see, as soon as you start on the map, there's a new button here. This is the move button. So when you click the move button, these things don't go into effect. So you can drag your canvas around. Once you disable this, you can paint the countries. There's the different things that you can do. The first one is edit tile countries. So you can assign the countries that these tiles belong to. So there's, there's different countries. Uh, there's about 60 ish of them right now. So for example, I'm just going to do Soviet Union and Germany. So I'm going to paint some of these tiles for Germany and you know, it's not very pretty, but for the sake of this video, it's fine. And as you can see, there's German territory now. And after that, I'm going to assign some terrain. So there's uh, six terrain units that are featured in this game. The first one is planes, which is just nothing. There's forests that you can add. You can add mountains here as well. These have different uh, movement costs and terrain bonuses for different units. So if you want to add them for historical accuracy or, you know, for the sake of your game, it's fine. And water here, you'll notice that water doesn't appear normally as the game would. It doesn't actually cut the lines between the tiles. That's because, you know, I want to make it so that you can update the tiles easily. So I'm going to make a little river here that goes out to the border of the map and you oil stands for the oil refineries so you can actually add some here they generate 25 oil every single round so if you don't have any here your troops might actually run out of oil and it just makes for a very boring stalemate game the last the last terrain is the desert it actually doesn't serve much function except for being a historical accuracy sort of terrain for Africa and the South Americans. So the third thing you can do is you can add soldiers. There's different soldiers you can add. Their names are not the best because I actually just use the code names. I wasn't planning on giving everyone the map editor when I first made the game, but I thought that would be a good idea. So, you know, it's badly made, but you can choose the infantry units you want to place here and you can probably tell what they are. So as you can tell, you can place the infantry units. There's all, all the different types. You can do anything you want with these. And once you create these units that you want, you can assign them different values like veterancy. So let's just zoom in and you can give these units top veterancy and you'll see how they do a lot better against the other units. can also assign the unit sizes here as well so you can give some you can actually can't assign buildings unit sizes because buildings only have one unit size but for all these units you can assign them sizes and also if you notice that these units don't appear as boats that's because I don't want you to not know what unit it is but when you actually play the game it'll appear as the boat you can also add cities and when you cl first click on city it just shows you tier one population and tier one industry. <laughs> and these cities actually don't have health. So you should actually put a unit on the city. The AI will actually fill up their cities that are empty, 
but if you don't do that and the player has access to paratroopers then you can mess up the game really badly you can also assign city names here so you can type in something like moscow and you can just click on it and you can assign as many as you want So there's also these different aspects. City population stands for the, the the first one here. And there's five levels that you can do. So there's that. And there's industry. There's four levels to that. So you know you can if you don't want missiles, just don't give level four factories. And there's also three levels of airports you can do here. The last two are pretty interesting, and this is where most people trip up, so I want to explain this properly. This edit game settings has everything about the countries that you're going to actually be putting in the game. So this is the country that the player controls. This is the country that you're editing right now. So for example, Soviet is this country, and by default, it actually has 300 manpower, no industry, and 150 fuel. So if you want to change that, you can change it to whatever you want. This is the mission name. This is the round limit. So here's where most people trip up is if you click on capture all strategic cities, if you have a round limit of zero, I actually made it so that the game won't, won't actually finish because a lot of people don't set a round limit. And what ends up happening is that the game just instantly finishes if I actually check and it's actually default to zero. So the other thing is that so if you set a round limit to 10 and you don't assign any strategic cities, and this is the requirement, if you assign a round limit of 10 and there's no strategic cities, the game will check and say that all strategic cities have already been taken, so it will automatically make you win the game. So if you don't want any strategic cities or you don't want like a purpose in the game, you just want like a random brawl, then don't change this, set this to zero, and just, you know, just don't mess with the, these two categories. And this is the maximum generals that you can have in this game. It should be pretty low because one general can be assigned to multiple units. And the new feature that's recently added is this country alliance feature. So for example, if you change, if I make a new country, uh, say I make Poland, and usually Poland's on the allied side. If you check the game settings, if you check this, uh, if you go to Poland, you'll see that it's allies, but you can change it to neutral. So it's just the battle between the Soviets and the Germans. Or you can actually just change the Germans to the allies so that it's a, you know, you can do the partition of Poland. That's mostly about it. There's one last thing, which is AI detection. That's how many tiles the AI, the enemy AI can attack. I made it so that friendly AI does not have a limit so that when you're playing missions where you have to like drag troops across long long front lines when you're invading your allies actually help you with that so if an enemy ai has an attack of two it will detect any enemy units within two tiles and it will move to that so if you set this to zero or you just don't change it then your enemies won't move they'll only attack if it's in range so the missiles will still attack anything that's in its range of 10 but the tanks here won't actually move so usually if you want like a world conquest stage then just set this to like 100 or just 20 or at least like 25 so that all the troops move from very far behind so that like any troops here will still attack or go to the city that's up here or at least try and move towards here. The mission names and these uh, victory conditions are pretty self-explanatory but in case you didn't know, the strategic cities are the things here that you have to assign manually so if you click on a unit, you can assign it as a strategic unit. And if you click it on a city, it's a strategic city. So how this works is that if you're the player and you have a flag marked on your troop, then it doesn't matter which one this is. As long as your troop has it and it dies, you'll lose the mission. So if you don't want that to happen, then don't put a flag on your troops. You can put a, if you put a flag on enemy troops instead, it actually means you have to kill the enemy unit. Unless it's a hold all strategic cities, then the enemy flags don't do anything. So another thing that people trip up on is when you assign a strategic city to an enemy and you set the mission goal as hold all strategic cities, you'll lose on round, round one because you don't actually have access to the enemy city. 
And so that's about it. So if you assign these, we can try the game out and I'll check one more time that the player is the player is Soviet. So here we go, the mission is untitled right now. I'll tell the war. And how you test your own games, don't actually upload anything before you test it out. So you click on custom map, you can see all the custom maps here. And the, the one I have right now is here. So if I load that map up, should be seeing about, you know, the resources here that I didn't assign. You can see the troops here and the missiles here. And you can see that Poland's actually neutral, so you can't attack it. So anyways, after you've made a map, and it appears here, you can click on the map and upload it. And the reason why I made it so it costs 20 gold is so that you don't spam the max and destroy my really bad uh, server and database. So if you click here, you can choose whatever name you want. I'll just call myself game developer because I'm the dev. And some people complain that this system isn't good. The reason why is because I use a simple HTTP request that's relaying like and storing temporary data. So sometimes if your internet cuts off, it might actually upload wrong data. But most of the time, as far as I know, it usually works. So if you click on the latest map here, it appears here. And you can play this map as well. So I'm playing my own map and you can like this map as well right here. And now this map is here for everyone to play. So there's that.